More and more, cities are being recognized as key role players in the development of economies. African cities in particular have to deal with high levels of urbanization and consequently with solutions like urban spatial planning and development. This new series of Business Spotlight will explore and examine the way in which the city of Joburg is run, governed and managed. Issues like how to make Joburg smarter, safer, greener and more prosperous will come under the spotlight. Last week, Parks Tau, the executive mayor of the city of Joburg, attended the World Economic Forum on Africa. One particular session was on smarter cities. And it's looking at it from a different angle. It's saying in the context of us being African cities, uh, confronting the high levels of urbaniz urbanization, how do you deal with the uh, matters of uh, building inclusive cities, uh, accommodating all the people that come into your city, ensuring that they become welcoming, and ensuring that they become more equitable in terms of how they create access to opportunities and prosperity. Uh, mm -hmm. And for us, I mean, it gives us the opportunity to discuss what we're doing as the city of Joburg from a spatial planning point of view. The corridors of freedom is amongst the key initiatives that we're driving on spatial integration in our city. Uh, rethinking the urban space and the role of the urban space in relation to how society interacts. Proximity of business, of uh, universities, research agencies and people closer to each other to create the necessary urban efficiencies that you require. But it's also about reducing the burden of access in our cities from a mobility point of view. Uh, our cities continue to grow and our transport modes don't always respond on time to the growth of our cities, but transportation becomes an important way in which people access cities. When people go into cities in search of opportunity, they need to be able to access the opportunity. Yeah. And transportation is a critical indicator of how people can access a city because it has improved its mobility. But it's also about uh, utilizing technology as a means of overcoming uh, barriers to entry, barriers to entry to uh, the digital world to the internet and that has become a critical issue in fact it's now considered that uh, access to the internet is one of the indicators of inequality in the world uh, and it's about both access and speed so it's about the capacity of internet access that we build and the speed that we create to enable our people to have equitable access to the opportunities that the digital world provides and uh, for us it's very important that in fact, we, we were able to say to our council last week that our transaction with regards to the building of our broadband network has been finalized and we're now able to mm. take advantage of that broadband network. So free Wi-Fi for Joburg as soon? Free Wi-Fi will be there very soon. We had committed to rolling out a thousand free Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the city. We've already started implementation, I should say. If you go into Bramfontein, we've got uh, coverage of 40% of Bramfontein and the intention is by the end of June would have universal coverage uh, of Bramfontein on a wireless mesh. And Bramfontein is very exciting because it's a youthful part of the city. It's got yeah. the two universities, it's got the educational institutions that are there. Uh, and it's a place of congregation for young people. We also have a centre that we're running jointly with Woods University around the digital space and digital innovation. So it's, it's, a, it's a real great opportunity for us to, to build from uh, uh, in terms of internet access and taking advantage of the opportunities that gives to our cities. Mr. Mayor, this almost reminds me of your State of the City address uh, where the th overall theme was making tomorrow better than today. And that also ties in quite closely with the WEF 2015 theme being reimagining Africa's future. We think that dovetailing into uh, WEF Africa is very important because it says that it is a responsibility of government in as much as it's a responsibility of entrepreneurs, scientists and everybody to ensure that our cities are able to, to accommodate the people that come into our cities and our cities become the centers from which we grow and prosper. Last month during the CNBC Africa special State of the City 2015 broadcast, the executive mayor Parks Tau discussed his vision for the city with Guguleto Trele in front of a studio audience. Today is better than yesterday and that yesterday and that rather tomorrow will be better than today. And I think for us it was an important 
theme to choose because it enabled us to reflect on the progress that we've made as a city. We inherited an institution that essentially had come from ruins uh, in the apartheid days into building uh, a financially stable organization that uh, has been leading and at the forefront of financial re-engineering of municipalities in the country. We uh, currently are a credit rated agency that uh, is, is rated by international agencies and is able to raise significant credit from the from the markets mm -hmm. um, and and we were at the forefront of uh, reintroducing the municipal bond market in the country as the city of Johannesburg and active very active in the bond market and for us it's an indication of an institution that has built its capacity to manage its finances in a prudent way but not only are we managing our finances in a prudent way we set out at the beginning of this term of office to invest 100 billion South African rents uh, in infrastructure development over a period of 10 years. When we started, this had just been after the period of the World Cup, we started when our capital budget was standing at, up, at around 3.9 billion rents. Mm. And when we committed to re-engineer our, fin our finances to enable us to invest that 100 billion, some were a bit skeptical to say, is it possible? And I'm happy to say that we currently have a capital budget in excess of 10 billion rents, and that has enabled us to do a number of things. And we've kind of looked at our investment programs in three ways, kind of separated it into three focal areas of investment. The first is about ensuring that those communities that do not have adequate access to infrastructure get access to infrastructure, that we address backlogs of communities that haven't had water, sanitation, electricity, housing and so on. Uh, at the second level, we've looked at recapitalizing aging infrastructure. There's a lot of infrastructure that's aging and you can witness that if you look at uh, the, the uh, amount of uh, unaccounted for what as a result of aging infrastructure and the age of our road networks, our bridges and other infrastructure. So we're investing in recapitalizing that infrastructure. And the third is about building a city of the future. Mm. Uh, rethinking our city, thinking of a city that's more compact, more accessible. We inherited a city that was designed for segregation, for exclusion, uh, and we're building a city that's more compact. We have defined what we call the corridors of freedom, which are the strategic corridors that we've identified along which not only are we introduce, introducing public transport access, but introducing land uses and intensity of land use that brings people closer to opportunities in a city and brings those opportunities closer to people. And this infrastructure would range from the road networks to park infrastructure, but it's also about digital infrastructure, the rollout of broadband, creating free Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the city. We did say in the state of the city address that uh, Bramfontein, Bramfontein this month uh, is, is evolving into a wireless mesh. Mm. It's an area where we have the bulk of young people concentrating, particularly because of the location of the two universities, Wurz and UJ, uh, University of Johannesburg. And thus we've identified it as an area for a wireless mesh so that you can get uh, Wi-Fi access from point to point within Bramfontein and in the university precinct. And that has already started. Let's touch on one of the biggest themes that you issue, uh, mentioned, which is the issue of infrastructure. Uh, uh, naturally, we cannot uh, avoid the issue of the current ETEL situation, uh, which uh, appeals to the Gauteng residents. But this infrastructure, it's a difficult one uh, because you've got this new developments that we see taking place, just the, the, the rapid bus transport system also unfolding and developing here in Gauteng. How do you balance these new initiatives with the current structures that we have. And I say this uh, because I, I'm trying to link the more formal uh, smart city that you're trying to introduce with traditional systems uh, that have always worked like the taxis on the road. Well, starting with public transportation, as I said, along our corridors of freedom, we've identified the need to invest in extensively in, in infrastructure that would support public transportation and therefore greater ease for mobility in the city of Johannesburg. You would know that an area like Sentin is experiencing high levels of congestion mm. and the situation is getting worse by the day. And we've identified this as a strategic area of investment. This is the commercial heartland of the city, not just the city, in fact, of the South African economy, uh, uh, the commercial heartland of Africa, so to say. And it's important that we ensure that it is 
accessible from a mobility point of view. We're investing in a bus rapid <laughs> transit system uh, to support Centin. There would be a, lo a loop around the core center of Centin that would enable people to have greater access uh, to Centin and easier access to Centin so that people have an incentive to leave their cars at home and hop onto a bus and they would be able to access the city. I want us to talk about that uh, term incentive because it almost seems as though people need some kind of financial reward. Uh, being told that you're not going to have to sit in two hours of traffic, you know, spend your own money on petrol, it almost seems as though it's not enough for Joburg residents. Uh, are we looking at alternative means here? I think there's an opportunity cost. I think that people would be able to make the decisions to say, am I prepared to sit in traffic for two hours and have that time, as opposed to seeing people who literally spend 30 minutes to get from one point to the other on dedicated lanes. As I say, the infrastructure we're building is along dedicated public transport lanes that would support mm -hmm. uh, the public transport network. It's, it's, it's not a financial incentive, it's an infrastructure incentive. It's, it's the ability for people to move with greater ease in and around centre. But we're also supporting that with the cycle lanes so that we create easier access, not just from a mobility point of view, that is in terms of buses, but also that people can access the city and in particular Centin with greater ease on their bicycles, they mm -hmm. can walk. It's, it's a very important thing for us that we create infrastructure that supports greater access to the city. If you think about it this way, the greatest public infrastructure asset that we have, public open access infrastructure that we have, is actually the roads, but these roads are dedicated to, to cars. Mm. And we're saying we need to, to rethink the way in which we invest in the infrastructure so that, so that it's more accessible, so that more and more people can use it in the form of um, cycling, walking, but also having adequate uh, uh, bus transport. But naturally, <laughs> infrastructure also needs electricity and energy supply, Mr. Mayor, and that's also something that is a significant threat uh, to South Africa. But I understand that there are several initiatives, uh, the, the uh, Kevin Calvin uh, power station, if I'm not mistaken, which uh, has been posed as a significant opportunity to help generate electricity in South Africa. And maybe if you can also give us insights on stage one load shedding. I understand that uh, <laughs> uh, jo Joburg in particular can still manage to keep the lights on. Yes, I mean, we, we're looking at interventions both on the supply side and on the demand side. On the supply side, we have opportunities to bring new energy sources onto the grid. Kelvin being a, a case in point, where, which is currently producing at an average, at a maximum of 200 megawatts. Uh, currently, there's a tender underway to recapitalize it and get it back to 600 megawatts that, that should be able to support the infrastructure needs of the city. We're also looking at new innovative technologies that have been tested throughout the world. There's a technology we're reviewing that's being implemented in Japan and the USA that uh, generates electricity from the uh, turbines, mm -hmm. rather installing turbines into your water pipes. Uh, so the bulk water pipes, you install turbines and you're able to generate electricity from that. And we're looking at, at that very closely because we think in a city where we're recapitalizing about 900 kilometers of bulk water pipes, this is an opportunity to put in that inves investment together with the turbines and therefore be able to generate electricity. Mayor, why send it out to tender though, uh, instead of involving SMMEs and even members of the private sector? And I'd like to use an example here, Calgro M3. Uh, they're well known as an infrastructure uh, company who are uh, involved in the development of Fleerof, uh, an, uh, an area I'm sure you're familiar with, but also the recent grave site that they've acquired uh, right on the Golden Highway, which I understand will be completely off the grid. And they're relying on solar energy to help power uh, that grave uh, area that they've uh, purchased. We're also partnering with the private sector. We've had engagements with uh, both the South African Property Owners Association and Business Unity South Africa about what energy they can pr bring onto the grid. So we're saying the initiatives can't always be reliant on government. There's mm. the capacity of uh, private sector companies to generate their own infrastructure that they can then transact with us into the grid. We're actually engaging with the National Energy Regulator to say, how do we then facilitate a transaction between those that have excess energy that can be transacted into the grid with the municipality? So we're looking at, uh, at the multiple options, both on the generation and therefore supply side, but also we're looking at interventions on the demand side. We have installed uh, 
uh, smart meters. We're continuing with the installation of smart meters in the city of Johannesburg. But this is not just helping us dealing to deal with matters related to billing and revenue collection. Mm. We're now able to introduce a mechanism that we call load limiting. So we can actually inform the device that the amount of energy that we will be supplying to the household would be reduced by this amount. And then the household can make the choice as to which appliances to switch off. Two things that are important. The first is that as a country we experience, we're experiencing high levels of demand and therefore um, we, the supply side can't meet our needs. And if you can't control it, uh, <coughs> you wouldn't be able to meet your energy requirements. If people demand to get electricity for free, mm. then they are not conscious in, and judicious in their use of the energy, because then people look it at it as an abuse. abundant resource. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if you are conscious that this resource uh, is not abundant and I, and I need to manage it judiciously, both for myself but for the rest of the country, then you'd be a lot more conscious. So from that point of view, it's important that we enable people to appreciate that uh, paying for, muni for municipal services is a responsibility that would enable our municipalities to survive. Let's get your closing message. Just a point of emphasis, the speech was really focused on young people. Uh, we focused on programs ranging from uh, Josie at Work to Vulindlele Josie, which mm. are youth development initiatives that are intended to create opportunities for the many young people in Johannesburg, including creating digital access to the young people of Johannesburg. We will be unveiling what we call a digital ambassadors program in the next three weeks, where young people would go throughout the city, educating people about how to take full advantage of the digital revolution. So this is the era for the young people of this city to take adv advantage of the opportunities in this great city of Johannesburg. Fantastic. A city for the youth and one that is full of potential, but also not excluding those with a little bit more experience. Right, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, thank you so much to our audience. After the break, Tamisha Greater discusses the city's 2015 budget with Finance MMC Jeffrey Makubu. In the last week of May, the city of Johannesburg announced its budget 2015 and the man responsible for the numbers, Finance MMC Jeffrey Makubu, was hosted in the CNBC Africa studio by Tomishu Greater. This is the biggest budget that we have had any city have, almost 53 billion rand. How are you going to deploy these funds and of course making sure that this is in line with the Joburg 2040 strategy? Uh, good afternoon to Michel and thanks for having us here. Um, we appreciate the moment. 52.6 billion rands that we will be appropriating tomorrow in council. We tabled it in council yesterday. Will be used really to um, further the work that we've been doing. We identified 10 priorities in the city and we said the first five are for the term of office and the others are for the decade. But we're doing all 10 at the same time. Uh, so, so the budget is largely allocated to those 10 priorities. Let's talk about those 10 priorities and the rationale behind it. Uh, it seems to be a key theme. We've seen the city of Tswane uh, put a big uh, chunk of money towards electricity. The sustain sustainability cluster that you currently have uh, also <coughs> has city power within it and they are a department that's been re held responsible with a lot. So uh, with that said, just to give us a com some color around that. Yes, we've got four clusters in the, in, the, in the city, and these clusters are based on the out, 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 outputs and outcomes of, uh, of the GDS 2040. Um, so the resource sustainability is key to us, not only electricity, but water as well. Uh, so a cluster led by my colleague, MMC Mfikwe, uh, who's an who's a, a MMC for infrastructure, uh, is really leading the charge towards sustainability. Um, as you know that uh, we're short of electricity, we're short of energy, and if you don't do anything around water conservation or alternative um, water management issues, we'll run out of water in no time. Yeah. So we must do something today to protect the future. So what's being done currently? What are the programs in place? Well, the detail is in the business plan of City Power and Johannesburg Water. Uh, so all they did, they came to us and said, look, we need X amount of money to, to do 
um, load limiting, to upgrade substations, to to upgrade um, uh, intake points. Uh, so, so he gave them the money to 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 do that. So, so there are programs to 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 roll out uh, smart meters that the mayor announced around load limiting. So, so they've got a couple of programs that they are doing um, at City Power uh, and at Water. They replacing pipes. Um, and then they're finding w alternative ways of uh, water harvesting. Mm. We'll be speaking to MNC a little bit later from City Power around load limiting uh, and so forth. But uh, with regards to that, the rollout timelines, uh, because this is an urgent issue, we've all felt the discomfort of not having electricity in Johannesburg. Yes, we do say in the speech yesterday that uh, it affects children uh, while they're doing their homework, it affects uh, counselors and elder people who are trying to study late in their lives <laughs> it affects uh, it just disturbs lives uh, generally so 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 we, we we think that it's a progressive thing um, I think they'll roll out uh, the smart meters quicker than we thought they would um, because it's an urgent thing I agree with you on a yearly basis, we are seeing uh, young students, uh, people who are looking for job opportunities coming to Johannesburg in order to try and find uh, some jobs here. Is Jobo going to be able to absorb all these new job seekers? Our stats yesterday from the statistics uh, South Africa said unemployment officially now sits at over 26%. Yeah, we've got no choice. We have to find ways to, to, to enable business and the environment to, to be positive for, for job creation and, and, and all that. Um, you know, Jobo was built by migrants. It was built on the back of migrants. So, so it's a, we keep on attracting people every year. I mean, the statistic says we attract around 10,000 and more people every month. So it's not only young people, including the middle-aged, come to Chobek looking for opportunities. So what do we do with those people? Uh, it's not only employment, it's, it's where do they stay, how do they live? So it's people's life in totality that we have to focus on as a city of Johannesburg. Of course, for young people, there are programs like uh, Josie at Work that we piloting, you know, we're giving them opportunities through EPWP and, and so there are various programs that we did say in the speech yesterday that we'll be focusing on creating a dedicated youth directorate in the city just to focus on youth development. How long have they been in operational in operation for? Are they working? Uh, because it seems there's such a frustration that we're not seeing enough job creation and the outlook from a lot of the analysts we are, we are seeing is that the quality of job and job creation is looking very, very dim. We started the Josie at Work program last year and we think that will ramp up, uh, but it can't absorb every single person who's unemployed. Um, it will just be a contribution to the unemployment program. I think my colleague in economic development would, would share uh, what, what we're thinking about and the, the sorts of things that we're doing to spare economic growth and to invest in the economy. Um, but if you look at our CapEx program, uh, it's a spend in the economy. I mean, when we started, we are saying we'll be spending in a counter-cyclical manner. When everyone is pulling back, we spend, we pump in money into the economy. Uh, we believe that there'll be a multiply effect and it will, it will affect, it will help the economy grow. Now with a growing economy, uh, we must have make a dent on unemployment. I don't think there's any economic theory that can solve unemployment without economic growth. Mm. So we have to grow the economy, we've got no choice. The issue of management of these funds and making sure that they get deployed where they're supposed to go, accountability, transparency, and making sure that there is no uh, corruption that takes place. How do you respond uh, to these uh, allegations that sometimes may come across that the city of Johannesburg is not managing their funds correctly? I, we, we do. Um, I mean, we every single department uh, that, that's got a vote where we have appropriated money has got a director or directorate of finance. We are group finance, so we oversee the, the entire city, including the entities. Um, if there's any whiff of corruption, I mean, we've got an anti-corruption hotline. It's managed by by um, an external auditing firm. Uh, we normally say external auditing firm. We don't say which one, uh, even though we do know which one it is. Um, so, so people can, can, can report. In fact, through tip-offs from the hotline, we've made a number of arrests, including in our area in revenue, uh, in city power, and, and throughout the city, where people have tipped us off on incidences of not only corruption, but fraud as well. So, mm. so I think it is working, and we, we, we got no tolerance for, for fraud and corruption at all. My closing comment would be first a call to the citizens and the residents of Johannesburg uh, to work with us in in making Swanspec a great city. Uh, part of the contribution would be to pay for, to pay for their accounts on time um, so that uh, the city can have liquidity 
uh, to carry out these programs because largely we, re we rely on our own funds um, to, 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 to fund infrastructure and to fund activities of the city. So, so that's, that's really my, my closing comment. Uh, uh, we, we are confident that with my colleagues we will be able to spend this money and spend it uh, to the benefit of the future generations of the city as envisaged in the Jobek 2040. The very big thank you to my guest, Finance MMC at the city of Johannesburg, Jeffrey Makubo. And of course, a very big thank you to our studio audience as well. Until next time, from myself and the team, it's goodbye.